So we are going to get started. This is Jackie McGolden, and Jackie is a pre-K teacher at Fairview Elementary School, and she is going to make us all hungry this session, and I'm excited for her to get started. So Jackie, I'm going to pull up your slideshow. Whenever you're ready, you can let me know. I am ready. Hi, everybody. I'm glad you joined us today. I was counting as I drove in. This is my 35th year of teaching. And yes, I could have retired this year during all the COVID craziness. But no, I did not want to. Um, I love teaching. I love being around little kids. And I, frankly, it's hard to find teachers in rural areas. And I thought I'm just going to keep on keeping on while I'm still healthy and feeling good. Uh, today, we're going to do apples, apples, apples. And the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to use the air fryer. And um, when I was leaving, my husband said, hey, whenever you come home, be sure you bring home the air fryer so you can make more apple chips. And I thought, oh, it's working. We, he is not a huge fruit eater. Um, some little kids are, some little kids aren't. And we have always been told, cook in your classroom. Let let kids see you cooking. That was fine and dandy when wherever we had access to ovens. Now we don't, particularly. A lot of our food service products are brought in for lunches. I still teach half day sessions. So my kids are only here, you know, for three hours and then they go home. And that doesn't does not give me a lot of time to cook with them. We used to use dehydrators and, you know, core, use the apple peeler core slicer. I don't, I don't know if you guys, once you switch back to me, Audrey, maybe. Okay. We used to use the apple peeler core slicer and kids absolutely loved seeing this. I could get kids to eat apples or fruit anytime. And some of you probably have these. This is my second one that I've had and I've used in the classroom because we simply wore the first one out. Cooking with kids in the classroom is very, very important. And I found that I wanted to do it, but in my short time frame, I wasn't able to use the oven. The dehydrator would take three days. So last year I brought in my Instapot and I had apples and cinnamon cooking in there and everybody in the whole school that walked through our building became hungry, which is a good thing. And so this year I thought, I'm gonna figure out a way to use the air fryer too. So I brought my hair fryer and the easiest way to use this is with a mandolin. Can everybody see that? I feel like I'm talking to myself. This is kind of strange. You're doing great. We'll go with that. <laughs> and if you don't have a mandolin, you're gonna want one. They're very inexpensive. You simply insert the apple. Just like that. I have this on the lowest setting it can go on. I'm going to simply peel this apple. I'm not, I'm not going to peel it. I'm going to put it in very thin slices and I'm just going to keep rolling it right across here. You see my my, do I need to adjust my camera or anything? Just let me know if I do. No, that's perfect. We can see everything you're doing now. Thank you. The apples sliced very thinly. And I am going to take the seed out. I left the peeling completely on. A lot of these don't have seeds in them. I'm just gonna put them all in here. I did have some recipes where you could add oil and cinnamon to them. I'm not a huge cinnamon person. So the recipes today, what I'm doing today won't have cinnamon. If you guys were here to eat them with me, I would put cinnamon in them. But since you're not, Sometimes the seeds are flattened and they pop right out. Sometimes they're not and you have to cut them out. So 
sometimes the seeds are like this. You just swipe them off. I also figured out why my husband liked these, even though he won't eat an apple if I slice it up. These turn out crunchy just like a potato chip. Kids could use the mandolin. Okay, I think I'm through the middle part. So I'll keep dropping these in here, spread them, spreading them apart. If I get too quiet, please let me know too. While you're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the um, shared screen so everyone can see her uh, directions for this. So we can still see you, Jackie, and now they can see your directions as well. Okay. One to two apples is what I put on the recipe. I have found sometimes that one apple is the easiest. It seems to dry quicker. In a classroom setting, you might want to go ahead and put two apples in there but it does take a little bit longer and you've got, to, you've got to stir them more often. So one apple is all I use today. Cinnamon is optional. If you wanted to um, spray that, you can, it does, most of the things I've read say, do not use cooking spray in there like Pam. I have olive oil in a pump spray that I can pump up and then just spritz it on there. And I could put cinnamon on that way. We don't like cinnamon on them at home. so. Since you're not here to share with me, that's what we're going to do. We're doing without cinnamon. So I've got them all in here, just kind of placed everywhere. Jackie, we had one question. How much do children participate in using the equipment? I let them use the mandolin a lot. I don't let them use knives. My air fryer is super easy to use. I could let them we could, we're gonna go down to 300 degrees, so I would let them use, use this to go down to 300. I would let them, the time, oh, I don't want that time. It wasn't fast enough. <laughs> we also had a question, um, do apples stick together when they're in the fryer? Sometimes yes, and sometimes, oh, hang on, this is trying to, <laughs> Well, Sorry, I'm distracting you. <laughs> I'm going to go to 16 minutes. Okay, now, is that too noisy? Do I need to put it on the floor? No, we can't hear it. It's I don't fine. think so. I, don't. I have read my air fryer does not have a, a basket on top of it. I've read some times that it will say, put the thing on the top so the air fryer doesn't get caught up in the fan. Mine have never got caught up in the fan, so I don't use anything in there with them. Every five minutes, though, you need to take them, uh, kind of stir them, and I always just use tongs and kind of flip them around. Apples can burn in here. Uh, we've eaten a lot of burn chips, but I just kind of learned with one apple. I think my recipe may even say 20 minutes. With one apple, I'm just doing 16. Okay, I'm gonna let leave this going. I'm gonna switch to my next air fryer thing, or no, I'm sorry, Instapot. So I'm gonna leave, I'm just gonna move this over. Jackie, we had a quick question. Where did you get your air fryer? Um, my, my sister actually got it for me, but you can find them on Amazon, um, Walmart, Target, everywhere. And, and they're, Fairly inexpensive, $100, maybe $125. Okay, now the other thing that I did last year, I used my Instapot with them. This recipe calls for six apples, and I have five of them already peeled. Now I'm just gonna take the apple. This recipe is very easy too. I'm gonna quarter it. Peeling it, you can't see me, I'm over here at the side. And I'm just gonna drop this whole one quarter in there. Taking six apples, Fuji, 
Gala are my favorites, but whatever apple you like the best, you can use. You could have the kids bring in apples and use their apples in here. So now I have a total of six apples quartered. I'm just gonna drop them in there. Now my recipe on the slide calls for um, cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, and salt and honey after, yeah, thank you. Okay. And maple syrup and brown sugar. And I like everything except the cinnamon and nutmeg for my house, so we're not putting any of those in. I'm just doing apples and half a cup of water today. If you guys have used Instapots, kind of the new thing for fun. So they don't want to put the lid on. Make sure it's, the vent is down. And I'm going to put this one on for uh, I'm going to cook it at high for five minutes. So I'm going to go into custom. I'm going to go to time. I'm going down to five minutes. And then I'm going to push start. Five minutes is fast. Um, it will take a minute though too for it to pressure up. And as this is going around, that means it is pressuring up. So every Instapot is different. It will take a little bit of time for that to pressure. So now I have two things going in the classroom. We could do a taste test to see which one they like better, the applesauce or the apple chips, or we could make um, sliced apples. And then we could bar graph what they liked the best. So these are both going. I'm going to talk about some of my favorite books. We always start our unit off with this big book, An Apple a Day. If you tell pre-K kids an apple a day keeps the doctor away, they don't get it. Doctors don't make house calls. So I try to tell them an apple a day keeps you from having to go to the doctor so it will make you healthy. So the old sayings of that Kids still need to know them, but they don't really get them. So I, I do love this book though. It's, it's a big book and I've had for years. Of course, we like Johnny Appleseed too. And in our um, kitchen center, we always have an old metal pot that we put into the dramatic play center, um, plastic apples um, that we found at garage sales, so I'm not for sure where you're gonna find those. Um, a gunny sack that they can pack the apples into. They pretend like they're Johnny Appleseed. They love um, Johnny Appleseed stuff. My favorite Johnny Appleseed book is this one. I did look last night on Amazon and this one is still available. You don't hardly see this anymore. I got this at a book fair years and years ago. But this book talks about how Johnny goes out, he's out there and the bears come up and the, and he's not afraid of the bears, but the bears keep, he slices open an apple and gives them to the bear and the bear keeps returning with another bear. I've read this so much, my pages are all coming out. He returns with the bears and before long, it's full of bears and the kids are all worried about Johnny. Well, Johnny goes amongst them. He keeps feeding them apples. He scratches their backs and then he plants a seed beside each bear. And that's when we start talking about apple orchards and how orchards are planted because the last page talks about that how Johnny Appleseed's been gone so long 
but years ago, there's a mountain meadow in Northern Appalachian Range with a wild apple orchard growing in it. And it still talks about how Johnny planted these seeds and the, he's still scratching the bears back because they can rub them on the tree. And the kids love this book. And then we start talking about orchards and that's a, a big ag word to them. And we talk about apple orchards and pear orchards. Unfortunately, we don't have an apple orchard close by that we can um, tour. I wish we did, but we don't. We live in Northwest Oklahoma where we don't receive that much rain. And um, so, but I'm sure that we could go on virtual field trips on, um, you can Google just about anything and take you on a virtual field trip. Being there in person is so much better, but we can't, so we'll just, do the best we have. Um, Audrey, you want to pull up some of the songs we have too? You guys know um, the Muffin Man song? And once I start singing this, the kids are all saying, it's the Muffin Man, it's the Muffin Man. And I say, well, today he's going to be the Apple Man this week. So we sing that one. Uh, shake, shake, shake the apple tree. I like to eat apples and bananas. Pick some apples off my tree. And these are all songs that we stand up, we're singing, we're moving around, trying to get some physical activity in there, get some of the wigglies out of us. There's another one. These are all in the folder that um, Emily and Audrey and Melody will be sharing with you guys later. We do poems too, and these, these I'll do hand motions with, way up high in the apple tree. Um, here's a tree, we make a tree with our hands, and then we, when the wind blows, the apples will fall. Movement is a big thing with the little kids. The five red apples grew outside my door. That's a good way to put in kids' names. Got that one and another one that I have is the little red house and I'm gonna say that one to your kind of show you how I do when I start I always have an apple behind me usually a knife behind me I have a big comfy chair that I stick a lot of things down the side that I pull out before the kids even get here and they're amazed like oh where did you where did that knife come from or where did that come from this this, story, this is a very old, and I don't even know the, the author of this story, but it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a little boy who played all day long. One day, he was especially bored of playing with his toys and games, and so he asked his mother, what shall I do? His dear mother, who was, who was full of wonderful ideas, replied, I know about a little red house with no doors and no windows inside. I think you can find it. And of course now, these should be hidden in your chair. The young boy's eyes grew wide with wonder. Which way shall I go, he asked. How do I find a red house with no doors and no windows and a star inside? Go down the lane past the farmer's house and over the hill, said his mother. Come back and you can tell me all about your journey. So the little boy went on and on. He had not walked far when he came to a merry little girl who was dancing and singing in, the, singing in the sunshine. Do you know where I shall find a little red house with no doors and no windows and a star inside? Asked the boy. The little girl laughed and said, no, I don't, but ask my father. He's a farmer and he might know. So the boy walked on until he came to a big red barn. The farmer himself was standing in the doorway looking out over his green pastures. Do you know where I shall find a little red house with no doors and no windows and a star inside? Asked the young boy. Also, when I'm saying this, I'll let the kids chime in with me. Where I can find a little red house with, and, and they will say the answers. The farmer laughed and said, oh, I've lived a long time and I've never seen one, but ask granny who's at the foot of the hill. She knows how to make molasses taffy, popcorn balls and red mittens. Perhaps she can help you. So the young boy walked on until he saw Granny sitting in her pretty garden of her of herbs and flowers. Next slide. 
<laughs> it's easier for me to read while it's up there. She was as wrinkled as a walnut and smiling like the sunshine. Please, dear granny, said the little boy, where shall I find a little? And the kids will fill that party in. Granny was knitting a red mitten, and when she heard the boy's questions, she laughed so hard that a ball of yarn rolled out of her lap. I should like to find that little house myself, she said. Perhaps ask the wind, for the wind knows everything, and I'm sure he can help you. The young boy waved to Granny and began walking up the hill. He sadly wondered if his dear mother had made a mistake. So the little boy felt the wind at his back and he called out, wind, do you know where I can find? And the wind replied, Woo, which sounded like, follow me to the little boy. So the little boy chased after the wind through a grassy field and into an apple orchard. Here the wind blew to the top of an apple tree and gently shook a large rosy red apple to the ground. He picked up the large round apple. It was as much as his two hands could hold. Then he knew. He was tightly, he ran home tightly grasping the apple. Mother, mother, he called as he entered the house. I found it. I found the little red house with no doors and no windows. But mother, how do I know if there's a star inside? Mother took the apple and carefully sliced it in half this way. And there, oh, this one isn't a good apple, but there she found the star inside. The little red house with no doors and no windows and a star inside. And then we can slice that up and let the kids eat that too. That's one of their, their favorite stories. Anytime I can add in a story that doesn't have pictures where they have to have their own pictures in their mind, that's another great skill that kids don't always have either. Okay, we're gonna check on the air fryer apple. Jackie, I just wanted to say great job on doing that illustration for us. I know it's difficult to uh, read to a screen when you're not sure anyone's listening or watching, but I promise you've got lots of participants and I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you. There's another teacher here working in the building and I said, if you hear me in here talking, I'm just kind of talking to myself, so don't worry about it. So, um, she laughed because we all kind of do that anyway. Um, the air fryer has about two minutes left. The pressure cooker is down to four minutes. So we're, we're still waiting for that to finish up. Whenever, Melody, whenever you thought the pressure cooker was gonna be so fast, it does sound extremely fast, but you have to wait for it to pressure up. And that's what we find we get so impatient on. That's still pretty fast. You're being able to do two cooking activities in less than an hour. So I feel like that's really fast. Well, if you want to make it, if your kids are here all day, if you teach full day and you want to make it longer, you can always use the trusty crock pot. But since my kids are still only half day, I need something that's gonna get them done. We end up having the cinnamon apple over ice cream or something like that as a special snack. Some kids don't like them and, and we tell them that's okay too. And some kids will eat them for snacks even without the ice cream several days. We're now down to one minute on the air fryer. Jackie, will you tell them you have the recipes? I'm gonna pull it back up on your slideshow but you have the recipes for um, apple fritters <laughs> and also um, the sliced cinnamon apples. It's a little bit different. Right. So how do you do the apple fritters in class? Do you want to talk on that just a little bit while we're waiting? I actually haven't done those apple fritters in class this year uh, or in the past. I'm going to possibly try. Some schools are... Um, we have to follow Michelle Obama's. Some schools are um, still having to follow Michelle Obama's healthy eating acts. 
and it, that one does have sugar in it. Sometimes you can't cook with sugar in the classroom. So that's up to your, I'm fortunate enough where they let me cook with about anything. Well, I personally cannot wait to try the apple fritters recipe. I told her that when we were practicing. And just to remind everyone, you will get these slides, so you'll have all of these recipes to use. The apple uh, chips are not as crispy as I would like them to be. So I'm, but here's some that are. So I'm actually going to kind of sort those burned ones off because my husband's not going to like the burned ones. And I'm going to put this, I'm still just kind of sorting. I'm going to put this back in, but I'm just going to do it one more minute. I should have brought a burned. I needed to separate those because this one was stuck and it wasn't getting finished or crispy enough. This one is stuck. For those of you that haven't used an air fryer, just a helpful hint that we found out at my house, every time you pull it out at the end and put it back in, that temperature resets. So you're going to want to make sure that you adjust it back to the temperature that you need. And the great thing is, like she just said, she can do one minute. So um, for me earlier, I would have been setting it at five minutes because I would forget to open it and check on it. But make sure you reset that temperature. Um, we, we found that out the hard way, but great ideas. This one is super healthy too. Um, and anytime you can get kids eating something healthy, you're doing great. That one's just up. The pressure cooker is finished now. I'm gonna release the pressure. Can you see me? Yes. Also, just as a reminder, the Oklahoma Port Council provides grants for teachers um, to teach Ag in the Classroom lessons. So if you're going to be using the air fryer or the um, pressure cooker um, in your classroom, then you can add that to your grant request. You just need to include lessons. So for this one, an apple a day is a lesson that you would be able to uh, use those with. So you can request those for use in your classrooms and that's a great way to get money for that. And I think Melody or Emily One will add a link for um, the grant information or maybe the dates for you. Jackie, everyone's saying that they can smell the apples from home and they wish that they were there to help you eat them. Uh, that is one thing it it will smell up a classroom i'm done with the well you would really smell it if it had cinnamon and nutmeg but since since you're not here to share it with me and i'm going to be the one eating all the applesauce because my husband won't eat applesauce i didn't put cinnamon and nutmeg in it that only belongs in pumpkin pie not apples but that's debatable okay my pressure cooker i released it Apples are pretty cooked. So another fun toy that you could um, put in your grant is an immersion blender. You can use a potato masher, you can use a mixer. Kids love the immersion blender. Just gonna snap it on. If you put this in your grant, if you put the immersion blender in your grant, then you can make yourself all sorts of smoothies and mochas and frappuccinos. 
Here's your applesauce. You see it? Yes, we can. And if you wanted, at this point, you could add in honey and salt. And if you guys were here with me, I'd share and put honey and salt in it, but you're not, so. I'm amazed at how quickly you made applesauce. That I'm fascinated by that one. <laughs> okay, these are still a little bit, um, I think it kind of depends on the freshness of your apple. These are still a little bit, um, not as crispy as we like at our house. So I'm just gonna do another minute. I see this one's brown, so I'm gonna pull it out. Because if I leave these brown ones in there, they are going to be really brown. And I'm done. Oops. And you can just keep adding one minute at a time. Jackie, I know that this is all about apples, but have you used your air fryer to make other um, kinds of chips like zucchini chips or something like that? I made, I chose to make zucchini chocolate cake with my zucchini rather than chips, rather than something healthy, but yes, you could. Um, okay, maybe that sounds with, <laughs> sprinkle them with Parmesan. Um, we made, um, I used the mandolin and cooked, uh, cut up uh, potatoes the other day and made but, uh, French fries real quick. Um, my son, who's a sophomore in college, told me, he goes to school at Northwestern and there's not a lot of eating places at Alva. And so he, and he's a good cook. He, he cooks for himself a lot. He took an air fryer to the dorm and I said, you can't take an air fryer to the dorm, but he got approval to, he cooks all sorts of things, chicken, chicken strips, potatoes, vegetables. He's my healthy eater. So he will put vegetables in there. I'm, I'm sure you could make zucchini chips, um, squash chips, pear chips. Pears might be a little, have too much liquid in them. Um, you, I, I'm, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. We're, we're big apple chips. Okay, that was just another minute. They're crisper. Now they're in my, if you were doing this for the classroom, you may have to do um, several chip, several batches because this is all I have for one apple. You would have to do several, you know, and I'm gonna leave, you let them sit out for a little bit and they kind of crisp up some more. I cook in the classroom, I generally just cook one thing a day. So one day it would be apple chips, one day it would be applesauce, one day it would be cinnamon apples that we, we could put over um, our ice cream. So does so anybody have any questions or comments? I'm pulling your slides back up. So while well, people are um, typing in their questions for you, I just want to make sure that we covered all of your slides. Yeah, I was gonna say, go to the Ag in the Classroom. Ag in the Classroom, the, Audrey just told me yesterday, she's updating and putting the new Apple a day slides in there. The old ones were um, not, let me say the former ones were geared mainly toward maybe second and third graders. This one she said is kind of early childhood more friendly. 
and um, she can scroll through those. So you're actually getting a sneak peek at the new Apple a Day Ag in the Classroom activities. Yes, and just uh, for those of you who have taught the lesson in the past, um, the standards on it were for early childhood, but it was not an early childhood lesson necessarily. Um, so we've added uh, different reading pages, passages that are more early childhood friendly. Uh, we try to keep everything in there that was important in the past, but just make it a little bit better for the younger students. So for this one, she's been talking about having taste testing. Uh, this is just for the apples in general, the different colors, but you could also use it for your applesauce or for your um, sliced apples as well um, with your students. And then we have two more recipes in the lesson. So apple cinnamon dough ornaments and applesauce oobleck. So if you are um, using oobleck in your classroom, maybe during um, Dr. Seuss week or some other time, then that's a, a good thing that you could add as well. Another thing that Ag in the Classroom um, has always done is the poster contest and the coloring contest. My students have always entered. It is due in December, which I used to think that was kind of an awkward time for things to be due, but I started sending them home in November and when they got them finished, I did have them do them at home rather than in the classroom. And um, I can always tell if a parent has helped a child and I, you know, I, I will send another one home and, you know, say, please have the child do this you know, solely on their own. Um, it, I've had winners in the past and we got to go to the Ag Day, which is in April at the Capitol. That was one of the most fun things we ever did. I took my student around two years ago. We, she received her medal and her certificate and she was super shy, but she went on stage and her parents and her grandpa went with us. And he was so, so, so proud. Um, then we went upstairs after the presentations and there's lots of vendors around the um, second floor, maybe third floor of the rotunda. And she came home with sacks and sacks of things. Um, one thing she got was a, a pine tree from the tree association. And she, has, she planted her tree, I got one too. She planted her tree and she called him Little Bit and she keeps telling me how much Little Bit has grown even two years later, she's still watering her tree and so proud of it. Um, that was really a fun, fun, fun day. I also had a winner this year. We could not go to the Capitol for that Ag Day and I, I myself was disappointed. He didn't know any different, but um, I was disappointed that he wasn't gonna be able to do that. So I'd encourage you to go ahead and, in, and have your students do the Ag in the Classroom poster and, and the coloring contest. It's really easy. And, you know, ag is so important for our kids. I live in a rural area and you would think that um, kids would know ag. I, my husband and I raise cattle and sheep and, and we have three grandkids, um, raise cattle and sheep and wheat and alfalfa. We've been doing a lot of hay. So I was really glad to get to come to the classroom today. And, I take for granted that kids know about agriculture and they don't. 20 years ago, and this is Northwest Oklahoma where I reside, I was reading a story about a rooster who couldn't crow. So he couldn't wake the farmer up. So I said, how is he gonna wake the farmer up if he can't crow? How, how's the farmer gonna wake up? And the kids were all going, oh, we don't know, we don't know. And one kid goes, I've got it. I said, what? And he goes, a hay bale. And I said, a hay bale? How can you use a hay bale to make, to wake a farmer up? And he goes, you know, ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling. And he thought a hay bale was a hay bell. And I thought, oh, even here, kids are not aware of all that ag is. So we had a long talk about hay bales and that 
that kid opened my eyes up so much that even it was tr literally 20 years ago and I it made me so sad every year at um, Easter we now go out to my farm we have our Easter egg hunt out there I have a huge yard with a big circle area we have our Easter egg hunt out there the kids know it when they come into my classroom every year they're like we get to go to your house in Easter don't we Yes, you do. And, and I try to, we have baby sheep and uh, baby calves. We've had ducks at that time in the past. We've had turkeys and we just walk around the farm. Um, my, we show them the equipment. Um, while my assistant, I have a full-time assistant, while she is hiding all the 800 and some Easter eggs that parents send. And it always amazes me how much our kids don't know about agriculture. And it is so important that they do. They are going to be cons our consumers. They're going to be our voters. They're going to be, I'm, I'm reading some of these comments. They are going to be the ones making our decisions in the future. And I want them to fully support agriculture. And I want them to know that agriculture is vital to their livelihood and their well-being. They may not be directly involved in production agriculture. Today, less than 2% of the population is involved in production agriculture. So those of us that do produce food and fiber for the rest of the world need to keep you guys educated and need to keep these young kids realizing the importance of agriculture in their lives. Any questions? Thank you, Jackie, so much. I saw someone commented and said um, five years into their Ag in the Classroom journey and their four-year-old son told them that chocolate milk comes from brown cows and that was an eye-opener. So I think that's a good reminder not to take it for granted that, that our students know and, and Jackie, I appreciate you bringing that up and pointing that out because it is so true. Um, someone else said that their grant list is growing. Thanks for all of the ideas. This has been a fabulous session. We've got just a couple of minutes and since this is an early childhood session, I do want to share, uh, Melody, I've got it pulled up. If you want to talk about it, I'll mute myself. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, the new uh, ABCs of Agriculture Coloring Book. I'm super excited. It's not there on the screen yet, but um, I had updated it a couple of years ago, but this has even more changes. And so I'm um, wondering if you would go to the C page, that would be great. We've tried to add a little more interactive things and like scroll down to the bottom. So it says color uh, the jeans blue and then color the t-shirt your favorite color. So we've tried to give them some knowledge about cotton and then do a little interaction. So there's not interaction on every page, but then if you would also go uh, maybe to the X page, so all the way down. Uh, X is really difficult when you're teaching little kids, and so there are no good words that start with X, and so we did use box because that's the appropriate place uh, for X in a word uh, for young children, so it makes that sound, but then draw your favorite uh, fruits and vegetables in the box. And so we also added uh, all of the different uh, digraphs in there. So the ch sound for chicken, we've added all of those. But if you'll uh, keep scrolling, Audrey, uh, we also have some activities for you to do uh, syllable counting and initial phoneme. Uh, uh, matching and rhyming at the end and so we think this is a really great teaching tool for um, pre-k, k and even some of your first grade um, classrooms. For second and third grade it's just full of lots of information and building background knowledge. We also have a math page in there. I always say I don't do math but that's in there too but I love the syllable counting and I did uh, uh, we put that in there rhyming word match uh, 
that initial sound. And then we also um, have individual phoneme counting is in there. And so you could have kids either make a mark or you could use it interactive and put a uh, put chips in there to count the phonemes. And if you have advanced kids, then they can tell they can tell you what graphemes actually go in there. I didn't put any directions in there, but you could use it for spelling. Then for more advanced kids, we have um, the ABC order. And do we have, yeah, the ag um, homophones in there. And so at the very end, so you can request that. We can get those sent out to you guys uh, for a class set or for your whole grade level team. There are the answer keys in there just in case you don't know what a picture is. And so um, a lot of time could be just spent on building that background knowledge. Um, this is also another favorite uh, reader that we have that's appropriate for early childhood. Um, it's my favorite new reader. Uh, I think it's really fun. I hope that you guys will like it. It has the barnyard matching. Um, is it a bird? Is it a, is it a mammal? Is it a farm animal? I just, I think that's a fun title. So we hope that you guys will like that. And then there's also the engineering process for pre, uh, for a, uh, early childhood. And so we simplified the language. We kept the symbols the exact same. The process is the same whether you're doing it um, with a pre-K child or you're doing it with a high school student. But we tried to make the graphic a little friendlier and use simplified language but so they would understand that that is a circular uh, process and that you uh, define the problem and just keep working around.